this is 365801 and this is another video in my Behind Closed Drawers BL Collection Tour series. This is, I think, video number 6. Um, I have to keep checking and counting the drawers, so yeah, I think this is number 6. Um, in this drawer we have 801, we also have some Kodansha and some Kitty Media as well. So if that's what interests you, stick around and we'll go through my collection. Underground Hotel number one and number two um, by Mika Sadahiro. This is something that I was able to get uh, last year. I was very surprised to be able to get it. It's quite difficult and I was able to get it for a good price so I'm really really pleased. Mika Sadahiro's works are usually quite dark and angsty, sometimes violent um, and they have a very specific type of tone. So I think you have to be in the right frame of mind or in the right mood to be able to sit down and enjoy it. And I have yet to find that time or mood. So I have yet to enjoy this series, even though I was very happy and very pleased to be able to get it. Um, I yet have not read it. On Bended Knee by Ruri Fujikawa. This is a collection of short stories. They're quite fun. There's a lot of fluff. Um, unnecessary sex, <laughs> the usual, but um, I really love Rudy Fujikawa's work um, and the thing that I like the most about her work is the commentary that she gives at the end. Usually at the end of these manga you can find the comments by the author um, about how they wrote it, what their process was, uh, things that cause them issues, that kind of thing, a sort of reflection. And uh, Rudy Fujikawa's reflections are my absolute favourite. She comes up with the most ridiculous things and everything she says I just absolutely love. She also has a habit of um, anthropomorphising things to make them be yell in her um, reflections at the end and sometimes there are about random things um, and I absolutely love that. Sometimes they're about biscuits, sometimes it's about salad dressings, <laughs> random things like that and um, they're always really amusing so if you find a new Rudy Fujikawa uh, make sure you read all of it right to the end including her very amusing, probably more amusing than her actual work, <laughs> musings. I really like uh, what she has to say. This is Love Skit by Die Honjo and it is about sort of unrequited love or finding the right person who is your uh, true love and being comfortable with them. Um, I think it's to do with a boy who has lost his sister and is in love with his brother-in-law. <laughs> so that's the basic premise. Um, but what happens? I'm not going to spoil it for you. I really like Rie Honjo's work. Um, this I think is one of her like first works uh, so it is quite old I think uh, style wise but um, I really enjoy it it's a good one it's kind of light fluff really easy read um, yeah I don't really have anything else to say except I really like Rio Honjo's work I think a lot of her work now is available on uh, Renta um, so that's where I've read some of her works as well um, I do like her, her newer works too, so yeah, go check it out if you can't get a physical copy and you can go to Renta and get some of her work there too. The next 801 title is King of Debt by Sanae Rokuya and I did a review video on this for the 25 Days of Manga so I'll put a link up in the corner somewhere for you to click on if you're interested. Um, I read it because it had red on the cover. <laughs> That was the only reason, and it really is the only reason to read this. I well, it was it was it was of its um, type and style. I think I've got nothing else to say on the matter. <laughs> Go watch the video if you're interested. This is sensitive pornograph by Ashika Sakura. Um, it is a collection of short stories and it is probably most famous for being um, an OVA with two of the stories from this um, manga and <laughs> being known as sensitive pornograph because back in the day that was quite shocking. <laughs> Not so shocking now. 
Um, but the stories in it were seen as being very shocking and the fact that they were animated and um, it was quite explicit and so um, yeah it kind of built this reputation of being quite the, the, the epitome of shockingness until something else came along and <laughs> knocked off its um, number one spot. Um, so yeah you can go and watch an OVA on this. Um, and it is actually quite difficult to get hold of a good copy, but since I have got this, and I got this for a really good price, I've seen it come up twice before, um, no, once before, which was really expensive, and twice afterwards, where it was actually fairly reasonably priced. So it's not as difficult to get hold of as it once was, um, once it was, you know, like £100 for the one volume. So um, you can get this if you search and wait. Um, if you were so inclined. So sensitive pornograph. I finally read it and I can't say I was all that bothered about <laughs> the stories inside. I recognised obviously the two from the OVAs because I watched it, um, but other than that I wasn't all that bothered about the rest of the stories. So yeah, it was an okay one. I also think I reviewed this for one of the videos. I'll see if there's a link I can put. This is uh, Duo Brand's Kiss Your Hair and it is, I don't know, about like a hair fetish thing. I haven't actually read it, I just looked at the back so I don't know what it's about. And that's probably because Duo Brand is not um, a mangaka team I think that I'm all that bothered about. I'm glad that I have it, there's a couple more. Um, of their works I think that I need to get to be able to say that I've got everything in print so I haven't got it all. Um, their artwork is not something that ever really appealed to me so much and I always associated them with other things like uh, game design and things like that so I don't know why but I think that's why I've never really been all that bothered about going oh yeah I must read but um, I think they were quite popular for a brief time. I don't know how popular they are now but um, I've just never been bothered to actually read this, so <laughs> can't tell you what it's about, sorry. Deeply Loving a Maniac by Yo Higashino. I have more of her work in this drawer, but not necessarily by 801. Um, so she has had a few uh, titles um, translated and published. Uh, I have two copies of this title for some strange reason, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure I've read it, but if I could, you know, if I was asked to tell you what it's about, sorry, I don't actually know. <laughs> um, some of her other titles I'm like, oh yeah I've definitely read that but I don't know what it's about and I think that's kind of um, the type of stories that she has. She's got very distinct art style for the faces and bodies and I, I'm pretty sh sure, yeah I definitely read this but I can't really remember very much about it, sorry. <laughs> but I have two, type, two copies of it, I don't know why but yeah. There you go. Hinako Takanaga's The Devil's Secret. Now I have read this and I do remember what it's about. I actually thought I had two copies of this but it turns out I probably only have the one. Um, so this must be it. Um, and it's about a priest who finds a demon and they get on. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> yeah that's about it. That's all that happens in the story. Um, but I do remember it, so at least it's good enough that I can remember what the story's about. You know, it's simple, I understand it. And I do remember being quite um, pleased with the way that the priest, although it doesn't look like it on the front cover, he's actually okay with being ravished by a demon. Um, and then also I like his, his family get involved, and I think one of his brothers comes down. Um, to try and collect him back because he's a succubus or incubus or any one of those things. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's a bit funny. It's got some family things going on, um, and I liked the other characters as well. And I liked, obviously, that the priest was quite happy to be in this relationship, not constantly saying no, no, no. So yeah, that was a good one actually by Hinako Takanaga. Um, and not too difficult to get hold of, I think, so if you're looking out for a copy, um, you know, if you can't find one at the moment, just give it a wee wait and one will turn up, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, The Devil's Secret. Not bad for, <laughs> that sounds really mean of me, but not bad for Hinako Takanaga. Weekend Lovers by Kiriko Fua, um, and this is a collection of short stories, and I read it last year for my reading BL challenge and 
uh, I can even after I read the synopsis of the back because I thought I better do that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just keep going. I don't know what this is about, the, <laughs> whether I've read it or not. I don't actually remember reading it. I don't remember what it was about. It's kind of one of those throwaway ones. So sorry if you really liked Weekend Lovers by Kira Kofua, but for me, it was just a bit meh. Because I honestly was like, oh, did I read this last year? Well, it's in my record, so yeah, I did. Um, and I don't actually remember if it was any good or not. So, sorry about that. But yeah, it's a collection of short stories. <laughs> uh, but not very memorable. This next title is Love is Like a Hurricane by Tokia Shimazaki. And I have now volume 2, 3 and 4. Hopefully I'll be able to get volume 5 at some point. Um, volume 1 is apparently the one that's the most difficult to get hold of and the most expensive, so whether I eventually get Volume 1 and can actually read the story, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if this is available digitally, maybe it is, I'd have to check on the websites, but um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit tricky to get the full set um, on uh, online or on eBay, that kind of thing. So yeah, volume one I think is going to be the most tricky to get hold of. I think I could probably get volume five, not too expensive. I've actually been really good about not spending too much on each of these, so they've been around the five pound mark. So I haven't read it because I don't have volume one. I don't know what it's about, but um, I'm hopefully one day be able to complete it and then give it a good read. So it looks okay. So I'm happily just collecting them at the moment. Um, oblivious and ignorant as to what it's actually about. Uki Ogasawara's Black Sun Volume 1 and Volume 2. This is a title that I have definitely read and I read it several times. Um, it's about uh, monastic knights going on crusade in the Holy Lands and um, the encounter between um, a general um, Jamal, I think his name is, and Prince Leonard, who, or Leonard, I'm not sure how he pronounces it, um, and their encounter and being um, under siege in a castle. And Leonard, he is very um, devout, but he's also uh, selfless in that respect. He, he kind of values his life only in the giving of it for a cause, and the cause is to save other people. So he decides to do that, but instead Jamal um, takes his life in another way. <laughs> He's like, fine, if you don't want your body, I'll have it. <laughs> um, and it's very much about power dynamics and um, it makes it good times. And um, I really liked it. I really enjoyed this kind of historic setting. I like historical dramas. I like historical um, BL. So this was quite an interesting one. Uh, Ogasawara has another title, which I think might be a drama queen title. Um, and I've tried reading that one. I think I have actually read it all the way through once, but um, I tried reading it again last year and I just couldn't finish it. Whereas this one, I just eat it with a spoon. <laughs> it's like yum, 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 all the way to the end. It's very silly. It's very... Um, I don't know, I, I don't know how to describe the art style, it's, it's designery, that's not even a word, is it? <laughs> but it's sort of like um, a series of vignette artistic poses in sexy positions. It's a bit like going to a gallery in France and looking at all of the different poses of naked people in, in a past life being painted. That's kind of how I, I, view, I view this Black Sun. It's not great in terms of uh, consent, but if you're okay with that, and I'm okay with that, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's, it is what it is. I actually really enjoy Black Sun, and that's probably because Jamal is sexy. AF. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can pick up on a little bit of my taste in that <laughs> respect. Don't read too much into it, okay? Don't read too much. Next up is The Desert Prince by Shu 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 Sakurai. Was that enough shoes? Was it one too many shoes? Shu Shu Shu. Um, I have two copies in this uh, 
a drawer. I think I actually have another two copies maybe. I have a lot of copies of this. For some strange reason this is one that I've I purchased but I've also got it I think in um, like bulk buys and group buys and bundle buys and bulk buys and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah I have, I think I have two copies here and I might actually have two copies in my other collection. Um, <laughs> and it's a collection of short stories. It's, as you can see, this one here has some sort of um, nondescript Arab Arabic prints, um, and probably some sort of, I think I think he's supposed to be an archaeology student, which is why I probably like it because I've studied archaeology. So, um, yeah, the Desert Prince. It's a collection of one shots, and they're all very Mills and Booney. <laughs> Um, and I'm okay with that. This one I actually remember reading and being like, yeah, I really like this. Whereas, obviously, Weekend Lovers, I was like, I don't remember reading it. I don't remember if I liked it. Don't know anything about it. Whereas this one I know I've read several times. And every time I read it, I'm like, that is absolute garbage. I love it. I love it. And I'll read it again. <laughs> so yeah, The Desert Prince is very silly. But for some strange reason, I enjoy it. Um, I don't know if we've got a lot of Shushu Shu Sakurai's work. Um, I think we should have more. I'm just saying, I think we should have more. These two titles are by Takashi Kanzaki and they are Falling Into Love and His Arrogance. And they are some way connected, which is why I put them both up together. Um, I have, I think, everything that's published by Takashi Kanzaki. Another one of the titles is, um, is it Love Plus Alpha? And then there's another title as well, I think. So I think there's been four. I can't quite remember what the fourth one is. Um, but yeah, Falling Into Love and His Arrogance. Um, it's about modelling, model agencies. Um, I think it's like house shares, that kind of stuff. So I think Falling Into Love is um, like short stories and some of the characters in that uh, made it into having their own complete volume, which is his arrogance, so some of the characters cross over. Um, I have read this a long, long time ago, and I can't really remember other than that. It's Takashi Kanzaki, and some of their work is meh, <laughs> and some of their work is ah, eh, passable. I can't say I'm a huge fan, um, but I'm happy to have it in the collection, and I like the fact that there's the two of them together in the drawer, and that they are connected, so it's nice to have that kind of set going on. Um, like I say, I'm, much, I'm a collector in the sense that I like collecting things as much as I am about being a BL fan. So yeah, Falling Into Love and His Arrogance are two 801 titles that you could get together and read together if you wanted. Now I had to just flick through this to see if I had actually read this. This is Maniac Short Shot by Mia Osaka, and yes, that, that is the cover. <laughs> not messing around and I do have two copies yeah I ain't messing around um and yeah maybe 801 is quite explicit I've just been like flicking through them kind of briefly as I'm going some of them are actually quite explicit maybe that is um the more explicit imprint there you go but yeah Maniac Short Shorts is a collection of short stories about sexual exploration and that's about all I've got to say on that um because I don't I think I've read it, and if I have, I have no memory. Um, and that seems to be like a lot of these ones so far. You may have noticed there's a pattern that there's a lot of short story um, anthologies, and they're quite graphic, and they're also very forgettable and throwaway. So um, only a few so far have I been like, oh, this is what the story's about. Oh, I really enjoyed it, and. Uh, yeah, so so far they're not all that uh, great at selling themselves, other than it's short stories and it's basically porn, and this is definitely one on that radar. Um, but sexual exploration is something that you might be interested in, so give it a try if you like. Now I've laid out all of the Mio Tenoji works that are published by 801. Uh, I have two copies of The Sky Over My Spectacles, which I think she published first. Then Meeting You, which um, I also have two copies of, and then Don't Brush Love, which I seem to only have one copy of. Yay! <laughs> um, the Sky Over My Spectacles is a series of, once again, um, short stories, 
Meeting You is also a series of short stories and then Don't Rush Love is a one shot um, covering the story of um, roommates in school um, that's based on characters that were in Meeting You which is a bit like the Takashi Kanzaki story so um, a series of one shots and then some of the characters in that are developed further to have their own um, Tankobon volume. So yeah, uh, Tenoji Mio. I really like her art style, it's kind of easy on the eye. Um, her stories are not exactly the most deep and meaningful. I think she's also got some, she's got a digital title, I think, by Sublime, so if you want a digital title, you can go there. Um, yeah, I have been to Tenoji. <laughs> there is a place in Osaka, this is where she is from, Mio Tenoji is from Osaka and she named herself after the train station Tenoji. <laughs> um, and in Tenoji there is also an animate and I have been to that animate a few times and they now have an animate cafe as well. So I have had many great times in Tenoji. So for that I actually really like um, Tenoji Mio. Um, she also is a prolific doujinshi um, author and a good friends with the Yonezo Nekota, who um, they converse quite a lot over Twitter. They've um, hung out a lot. They go to um, like doujinshi events and uh, comic uh, events um, together, so they know that they're meeting up. And you can see like, oh, I'll see you on Saturday. Yeah, we wait. <laughs> they just have these kind of conversations uh, about their cats as well, that kind of thing, um, cats and dogs. And so, yeah, it's nice, you get to know a little bit about Mio Tenoji. She's, she seems like a good egg. And she's been going around, you know, for a long time actually, just as long um, as Yonezo Nekota. So, if you're interested, they have some, I think, collaboration dojin sheets as well. So, when half of it is one author and the other half is the other author. So, uh, yeah, check out her work if you're interested. This title is My Paranoid Next Door Neighbour by Kazuka Minami. This is, I think, another one of her titles. I've shown one before, which was, I think, Love a la Carte, and that was one of her like newest titles, whereas this one shows that there's um, more refinement in her artwork. Uh, although it's very distinct, you can still tell it's her work, um, but she's come a long way since the first ones that were published. Uh, this story is about two childhood friends who end up moving next door to each other, only one of them has been in love with the other forever, so uh, it does make things a little bit more difficult for them. I have said before though that um, her art style makes me feel slightly uncomfortable just because of the way that she draws the anatomy of um, the characters. Um, that makes me feel ever so slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> Everything's so rounded, and as I said, I think she was um, someone who drew a lot of Shotokan in the past, so it does make me feel slightly uncomfortable. Um, if you're fine with that, that's cool though. I have read it, so I obviously don't have that much of a problem with it, but um, it does make me feel a little bit um, less enthused as compared to something like Black Sun, which I'm like, mm hmm, yeah, good with that anatomy. Thank you very much. But yeah, each to their own. This is uh, Just Around the Corner by Toko Kawaii. I really like Toko Kawaii's work, but I haven't actually read everything that I have. Um, I'm not sure if I've collected everything, but I haven't read everything that I actually own. And I was really happy to get this title, Just Around the Corner. Um, so I'm really happy to have it, and I'm really looking forward to reading it. And uh, the reason why I really like her work is because she's written a series that is available on Sublime and I think it's The Scent of Apple Blossoms and I love that series. I'm going to read it again um, and I'm probably going to do a review of that just on its own because I think not a lot of people have read it no one really talks about it but it's one of my absolute favourites. I love it so I'm going to do a review of that one. Um, and I will read more of her work. Maybe I'll just have a Toko Kawaii day and just read everything that I've got. Um, she does have a lot of other titles as well. 
um, Cut is one that I was able to get last year. I was really happy to get it and I haven't read that one yet either. So I'm looking forward to more Toko Kawaii. Although I think these are a bit more angsty. I love the scent of apple blossoms. So, um, which is just feel good and happy. So yeah, just around the corner. I'm looking forward to reading it. So I've just taken out all three titles that I have by Shioko Kano. Um, by the 801 imprint and that is I'm not your stepping stone shameless and maybe I'm your stepping stone loveliness um, and then affair so uh, once again she must have such a thing for um, builders and construction workers because there's more builders and construction workers in these stories so um, yeah I can't remember if they're connected to the other stories that she has, like Punch Up and um, Playboy Blues. Maybe, because she does connect things a lot, so I did start reading them. I don't actually think I finished them, so I need to reread Shioko Kano's um, to Stepping Stone Works. Um, Affair, I have read, I think I've read it a few times, but it's a collection of short stories, um, I think from around her early work, so from around 2000 to 2005, something like that, I think, is that what I said? And so it's a, a selection of her works, so some of the works are very, very old and some of them are a little bit newer, and so you can see a, a slight change in her art style as well. You can see it in the front covers of these works, that Affair, when it's published, is the latest one, and the artwork on the cover is really modern and more up to date for her style, not compared to now of course, but um, mid 2000s. So yeah, um, there is quite a lot of Shioko Kano actually published and I think I've got most of it but not all of it. I'll have to have a check to see if there's any other Shioko Kano works available. I don't know if she has them digitally either, so Playboy Blues obviously, <laughs> just those one volume. Maybe they could do it digitally, I don't know. So yeah. Um, let me know if you have read them and if you like them, because I haven't actually... Um, I can't quite remember the Stepping Stone ones, so I don't know if I finished them. So let me know. I know a few people have read Affair, so if you like Affair, let me know. So I don't think any imprint would be complete without at least some Yokonita in it. <laughs> and this is the Prime Minister's Secret Diplomacy. This is one of her later titles, so at the back it, it does make reference to Casino Lily, Sound of My Voice, and Embracing Love, so um, they've obviously been published first, so to try and entice people into reading this story, which is about uh, foreign diplomats, foreign um, politicians, and their um, sexual intrigues and machinations, and um, I think it's to do with uh, one such type of foreign um, politician and his relationship with uh, one of the people that I think also works for the foreign office for Japan. So his sister is, is engaged to him but he sees him kissing another man so he seduces the brother just to shut him up as you do. Well as some do. So there you go, the Prime Minister's secret diplomacy. It's all about foreign affairs. Bada boom. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, but I like that. That was good. This is The President's Time by Tamaki Kirishima, and uh, I have some more of her work. I think uh, her, is it? Kiri Tamaki? Hmm. Well, I don't know actually. So I have this mangaka's work. Uh, Rough Love was one that I just got recently, um, and I think she has a new digital title coming out soon uh, by. Um, Renta, so if you want to read some more of her work, you can get some digital um, copies uh, by Tamaki Kirishima. Um, the President's Time, I have no idea what this is about, it still has this plastic on. I do think I might have another copy of it though, maybe. Um, but yeah, I have not read this, even if I had another copy, I, I have no memory of this, so yeah, I can't help you at all. It does still feel like I haven't read any of Tamaki Kirishima's work. I'm not such a fan of the artwork on the cover. It's kind of a bit meh. Um, needs more work. <laughs> um, a C plus for effort, though. 
the last eight to one title I have in this drawer is Ze or Z E, I think it's Ze, uh, by Yuki Shimizu, and I have volume one, which is obviously the first volume, and volume eleven, which I think is the last volume. I don't think there's a volume twelve, so I think that's the final volume. Um, and there are obviously some missing in between. I do have other um, Ze in my collection. Um, but I don't have a complete set. I think I'm missing uh, three separate volumes of different numbers because uh, after a certain point in time they were really difficult to get hold of. I have seen a volume two available but it was like 20 something pounds and I don't think I've ever seen a volume six except for in a complete set which was like 300 pounds and I'm just not willing to pay that price so I will eventually hopefully one day have a complete set and if not, I will just buy the Japanese and try and read the bits in between. So, um, I have not read all of this, but I have read um, certain volumes. So I think I sat down and read the 7th and 8th volume. This volume 11 is still in its plastic, because I kind of want to read a bit of it in continuation. So if there's a point in time when you're like, just read from that volume on, it's fine. You can get the whole story. Let me know. Um, I did read volume 1 last year as part of my reading BL challenge because I wanted to get an A to Z and this was my Z um, and I, I really enjoyed it. It was a good first volume. I like Yuki Shimizu's work um, but yeah, I'd like to get the full set but who knows if that's going to ever happen. So, wish me luck. So uh, this is the other titles that I have for um, A to 1, the publisher. Um, and it's all a bit messy, so just bear with me as I go through it. I do have another complete set of Black Sun Volumes 1 and 2, and I have Ze, which I can see that I've got uh, 3, 4, a 7 and 8, and a 9 and a 10. So I think I'm missing 2 and 5 and 6, which I think are the difficult ones to get hold of, so yes. Um, I also have um, Hey Class President, and I think I have all the volumes that are published, so they're all over the place, I'm afraid to say. Um, but I do have volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So those are the ones that have been published. I know that there are more in Japan, um, but they have not been published, unfortunately. Um, you can watch, I think, the, the OVA. I think there's an OVA for it, so yeah. Um, I also have In These Words by uh, Guilt Pleasure, which um, I think that might be the only one. If there's more Guilt, guilt Pleasure's work um, in these words in English, I know that they published it in English but not through A to 1. So I think A to 1 only published one volume, but correct me if I'm wrong because I'd like to know. Um, I also have The Dog and Cat, and there are four. Uh, volumes of that, and I think I have all four of them. Yep, one, two, three, and four. So I have all of them, dog and cat, but I haven't read them, so I can't really tell you about them. Um, I also have Bonds, that's another Toko Kawaii title, and Love Circumstances, and I can't actually. Devil's Infirmary, there you go. <laughs> I'm trying to read them. <laughs> There's the other Desert Prince, more Black Sun, and I do have the complete box set, um, the Sakira box set, so I have all of the Sakira titles too. Um, I also have, um, I think, yeah, another one of the President's Time there, another one of the Love Circumstances, why, I don't know. Um, there's the other Takashi Kanzaki title, Love Plus Alpha and another Don't Rush Love, so I do have <laughs> two copies of that. <laughs> Whoops, there you go. Um, and then Ichigen Me, um, Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Fumi Yoshinaga. I haven't read them and I really want to read them, so I want to read more Fumi Yoshinaga. Um, and then I have two copies of A Foreign Love Affair by Ayano Yamane, um, quite a popular one, and there's of course the OVA for that as well. Um, Another Weekend Lovers copy, why well, I did not know I had two, and The Incredible Kintaro. Um, I have no idea what that's about, sorry. So, random A to 1 titles and very badly organised when I took this photo, sorry about that guys. 
So yeah, um, this is all of the 801 titles that I own at the moment. So there's a few um, I'm missing, but not actually that many. So wish me luck for the future in my collecting endeavours. Now I'm on to the Kodansha titles that I have in this drawer, and a non-BL title that I have in this drawer is Cells at Work Volume 1. The only reason I have it is because it's the same size as my Hitorijime and My Hero, and because it um, was uh, a great find that I got in the charity shop, so I think it was only a pound. Really pleased to get it. So this title is Memeko Ari's Hitorijime My Hero, which spawned a anime series. This is volume one. I only have volume one uh, so far. I have actually three copies of it. <laughs> uh, two print copies and a digital copy. Uh, someone put up on Twitter that it was um, really low in price, so I snapped it up and got a copy. Um, so yeah. I have it in digital as well. I think I'll, it warrants a reread and it definitely warrants collecting. I really love the artwork, I thought it was really fun. I do wish that they had done the first story which is to do with the younger brother. Um, that was actually really popular as well so I don't know why they didn't. Maybe they will eventually because I know that the characters are in this anyway so I would like to have read that story too or at least had the opportunity to. So um, yeah, I need to collect more of Hitorijime, my hero. I only have volume one at the moment and there's like loads of volumes. I think there are, are they up to volume 10 in Japan? Maybe more. So yeah, I'm really behind on getting this. Because it's a newer title, I'm not as desperate to get hold of them. Um, but I really do want to eventually get them all. So looking out for good prices, that kind of thing. So yeah, Hitorijime, my hero. Very nice um, story. So next for uh, Kodansha, I have Sanami Mato's works, and that is With the Full Moon, uh, first and second, volumes one and two, which you can see the artwork together just looks really lovely. They've made it so that um, when you put them next to each other, it does kind of make this lovely picture um, of the characters mirroring each other. And then of course, next to that is At Full Moon, uh, volumes one and two. And this is a kind of fantasy, uh, but gothic, so it's got like vampires and werewolves and um, that kind of thing going on. <laughs> and it's got gender bending, so one of the characters is uh, male, except when under the full moon and then they become female. So um, Sanami Mato is kind of known for uh, kind of being groundbreaking in a sense because she made fake and she, that's quite a popular one, um, I think I've shown it already, so I think it was like a, a Tokyo Pop or a Blue title or something like that. So yeah, Sanami Mato, I read with the full moon, it's very episodic, it's got some interesting characters, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't as engaging as I wanted it to be, and it was very much of its time, late 90s rather than 2000s, so the fashion is fabulous. <laughs> Um, and I quite like that it was in its way groundbreaking. You know, we might not think of it as too much now, but it definitely deserves its place in BL history. So, Samimato, well done for you. And I really love these new Kodansha titles. They feel lovely, and they've done a good job with the the new covers. I don't, I don't actually have with the full moon um, in their old incarnation, which I think was either Broccoli Books or. Um, I think it might have been a Broccoli Books title, so I don't have them. And I would like to get them just to make sure that I have the full sets of everything that's been printed, but I'm quite happy to have these with the full moons at the moment. So, yeah, lovely stories, very interesting. And if you are a little nostalgic, then yeah, I would give them a read. So the last uh, Kodansha title I have in this drawer, I don't actually have a lot of Kodansha titles. Um, this is number six, volumes one through nine. I haven't taken them all out, but you can see them. And that is Story by Atsuko Asano and the art by Hinoki Kino. Now I've uh, I read this at the end of 2019, so I've done a review of it. Go check out the video, so I'll put a link up somewhere on the screen if you like. Um, I really enjoy this story. I really liked the manga version. 
In, that, in fact, I actually think I preferred the manga version to the anime. Um, it just felt more complete. Um, I do like the characters. I like the story. And it's kind of nostalgic for me as well. So, yeah. I'm really pleased to have the full set by Kodansha. I'm looking out for more Kodansha titles, so if there are any more BL or BL-esque, BL-adjacent titles by Kodansha that I'm missing, that I need to get in my collection, please let me know because um, it's one publisher that I'm not really keeping abreast of. Um, I think obviously there's Ten Dance, which is uh, being published and I think that's a Kodansha title that I haven't got any of yet, even though I really like the artwork and art style. I want to read the story. So I'm behind on that one as well. So Hitorijime, My Hero and Tenden. Tendans are the ones that I'm aware of. If there's anything else, let me know and pick it up. So this is the start of the Kitty Media uh, titles and the first one is Incubus. This is volume 2 and honestly, this is the only one I'm looking out for because I think I have almost a complete Kitty Media set. If I'm missing one, if you watch this video and you're like, oh, she doesn't have this and that was with Kitty Media, let me know because I think I've got them all, but and not necessarily on this drawer, but I think I've got all the Kitty Media that was published. So I am just looking out for Incubus Volume 1 and Volume 3. And they seem to be very expensive for some reason. Um, I was able to get this one for like, I don't know, it's like three pounds or something silly like that. Um, and it's in good condition, so I'm really pleased. And then um, recently when I've been looking, they're up at 25 pounds. Same volume from the same company, 25 pounds. And I bet it's not in any better or worse condition. Um, it just so happens that that's the price they put on it. Um, so yeah, Incubus is not a traditional manga by a Japanese author. It's an original English language one, but it's definitely done in a manga style, much more so than some of the other OELs that are or were being produced at the time that this was. So this is of uh, the the highest quality, I think, OEL. Um, and a few people have said that they really like it. Some people I know have got the full set. I do not have the full set. So yes, volume one and volume three. I am on the lookout for, and then I can officially declare Kitty Media completed, which is a huge deal to have the complete works of a publisher um, because they've gone out of business. They're not going to print anymore. That's it. I know I'll have everything that they've published, and I'll feel really good about myself. <laughs> and that's it. I can just do a little singing and a wee dance, and then that's me. So, yeah, I have not read Incubus. I've had a wee flick through, and actually, the artwork does look quite nice. So yeah, when I get volume 1 and volume 3, I'll read it with glee and pride, I think. So yeah, volume 2 is the last one I think I've got. Now I've got quite a bit of uh, Modoru Motoni. As I've said before, she does have a particular type of art style. Um, so I have more of her work here in the drawer as well. Um, she does remind me a little bit of Mi Mika Sadahiro, who has done Underground Hotel. Um, they have slightly similar art styles at this time period. Um, so yeah, dog style. <laughs> this is a three volume series. You can buy it digitally through Sublime, I think. So if you are interested, you can go and get some of these titles on Sublime. And dog style is one of them because actually it's a little, little bit tricky to get the full set um, in print now. And I'm really happy that I got it. Um, it's just chock-a-block full of sex. It's just chock-a-block full of, of, of exploration of sexuality in that respect. But in a way it's uh, just lust. A lot of it's just lust. But recognising that when lust is a little bit more than just lust, and actually maybe feelings will be involved too. It's about Yankees. So these boys who are kind of layabouts and always in about gangs and territory and getting into fights and just trying to eat McDonald's and sky from school and and jerk off. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But it's about these two boys and their previous relationships and their relationship with each other and, and how actually they talk about 
having sex because they're lustful but not actually necessarily enjoying it and then going through the, the process of finding out how to enjoy it with each other which I thought was quite nice so there was a bit of character development even though it's mostly just sex <laughs> dog style is um, well it's exactly what it says on the tin as what the old advert was it's exactly what it says on the front cover um, yeah quite interesting though I actually really enjoy the story because in the end you do feel that there's a connection there so and it's three volumes long and it's of that time period so for something to get three volumes uh, that is mainly just sex is probably shows the worth of the the quality of writing so the other uh, Motoni Modoru title I have is Poison Cherry Drive and um, I haven't actually read this one because I started reading the synopsis of it and in the same way that Mikasa the hero's work makes me feel slightly uncomfortable, this one makes me feel slightly uncomfortable. I mean dog style makes me feel slightly uncomfortable as well because it's not always, you know, nice sexual encounters and that's what is often depicted. So yeah, they're not always the best. <laughs> and this is one of them, and it's one of the older ones as well. So yeah, I haven't actually read this Poison Cherry Drive. I was really happy to get it, because it's in my collection. But uh, one day I will get around to reading it. Um, yeah, no, it, it hasn't really been like, oh, I must read this one. It's not necessarily great. But it's always an interesting premise. She always has really interesting, odd stories with interesting premises. So yeah, this is another one with an interesting premise. Not necessarily in the most comfortable reading though. So as I mentioned previously with um, Yo Higashino we have Gaze Anatomy and also Sense and Sexuality. So you can see the very distinctive art style on the front cover. Now I do remember reading both of these and I actually enjoyed them both. I really actually enjoyed the Sense and Sexuality one. Um, and Gaze Anatomy has another volume, but it's digital. So if you want to read it, you're going to need to head on over to Sublime and get the digital copy, which is what I did. So for Gaze Anatomy, I read it and I also read the digital copy as well. Um, I actually really enjoyed them. They were very silly, very throwaway, um, but I thought they were worth reading anyway. So. Yeah, this is Kitty Media's uh, Bora Naono or Naono Bora's title, Yokai's Hunger. I read this for the Manga Freakathon, so I can put a link for you if you're interested in watching that video. I really enjoyed it. Yokai's Hunger, so you'll know that there are yokais in it, so that means it's fantasy and it's about um, blood and uh, reincarnation and. Um, fate and lots of fun characters and I think the character that I like the most is one of the brothers who's the snake. He's the funniest. He's just a really great character design. It's great. So yeah, if you like um, now no Bora's work, you will obviously like Yokai's Hunger just, um, just in the same way that Three Wolves Mountain is a good title as well. Um, this is a good one too. It's a really nice easy one to read uh, one shot. Uh, just before Incubus, I needed to get the Crimson Spell, and I was able to get both of these for I think around two or three, maybe four pounds each. Um, the Crimson Spell, Volume One and Volume Two. So Kitty Media had the license for this Ayano Yamane title until it went bust, and then, of course, uh, Sublime now has it, so they're able to print it. So you're still able to get these titles because of the license save. So I have these two, they're quite compact, there's a lot going on them in them, they're really in such great condition, I'm so pleased I was able to get such great copies for such brilliant prices and um, I'm really impressed with how they look and feel, they're really good quality paper. So um, yeah, the Crimson Spell Volume 1 and 2, it's the only ones that were available. I think they were planning on printing the third volume when they went under. So. Uh, that's why there's only these two to get. So yeah, if you want to collect all of Kitty Media, make sure to keep a wee eye out for the Crimson Spell. And if you can't be bothered, make sure you head on over to Sublime and get theirs as well. So um, yeah, easy to get hold of. Me Sakuraga, I Want To Be Naughty. This is what was volume one of a very, very long series. 
um, covering these characters and their friends and their siblings and etc etc seem to be like offshoot of offshoot of offshoot so Mei Sakuraga had quite a, a long running very popular very successful series unfortunately only volume one was ever published so if you're interested in that you can get at least the first volume but once more you cannot get the rest which is a shame because um, you know her artwork is nice and the storytelling is okay and yeah I'd like to get the Japanese volumes but I don't think I have them so yeah it might be nice to get more Mei Sakuraga I don't think um, she has a lot else published let me know if you have any ideas of works of hers because I actually really like her work this is Family by Yuya. Yuya also has another work, and that was Freshman. That was published by Dieu. Um, I don't think there's anything else, actually. So uh, I think this might be the only things. And I haven't read either, so I can't tell you if they're any good or not. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, if you're wanting to know, we have Freshman and Family published, and I don't think anything else. But if they have anything else, let me know. But yeah, nope, can't help you. Don't know what it's about. The next author is Megumu Minami and uh, there are two titles that I have from Kuchi Media and that is Rose of the Rhine and Pleasure Dome and I actually really like the artwork. Um, it's like I'm looking at this for the first time. I'm sorry but when you have something in your drawer for such a long time and you're like yeah I'll read that eventually um, and I read the synopsis at the back and I'm like well that sounds really fun and interesting and something that I would like to read. And yet I haven't read it, so I can't tell you if they're any good. I actually really like the artwork, and I like the art styles and the design of the clothing, and the synopsis at the back seems really interesting for both of them. So yeah, these seem like good titles, and I haven't actually read them yet, so um, I don't know if um, Minami Megumu has any more titles, um, but yeah, these two seem really interesting. I'm going to have to give these a read, because they do sound quite fun about... Um, like knights and fantasy and stuff, which of course I'm like, yay, my kind of thing, cool. So yeah, I don't know why I haven't read them yet. These are Asami Tojo's Thunderbolt Boys Excite, volumes 1 and 2, um, and I haven't read them, so I don't actually know what they're about, other than what the synopsis says, and they're to do with models, and um, that's about all I know, because I haven't read it, and I don't know anything about it. Why have I got these things and I don't read them? Um, it looks interesting enough. I'm not sure if I've got any other Asami Tojo or if any other works of hers has been published. Um, so yeah, if you know anything about this, let me know, because I don't. <laughs> so I have them, and I'm happy to have them, and I will read them one day. Now, Kazuto Tatsukawa has four volumes of the Serio University series, and there are three in this drawer. There is a fourth, and I have that fourth one somewhere. <laughs> um, in my other collection, I'm assuming. So there's Scandalous Serio University is the title, but there's Return To, there's Class Reunion, and there's Beyond. And so I have these three, and there's a fourth one too. So um, I haven't read them, but if you would like to read them and you don't want to get the print copies or try and search around for a full complete set, I do think that Sublime have them digitally as well, so they are available. So if you've read them, you know what they're about, let me know. I don't know, was there like an anime series or a, an OVA made of it? I'm not sure, um, but I haven't read them yet. One day they will be complete together in the same place and I will read them together. So um, yeah, I don't know anything about it other than it's I'm assuming set at the university, <laughs> you tell me. So this is second to last, this is uh, Ru Takakura's work. Um, there are four volumes. Um, I have volume one and volume two of I Can't Stop Loving You. For some reason I have two volume ones. And I also have But I'm Your Teacher. <laughs> and then Skyscraper Skyscrapers of Oz. Um, and this is by Yoshino Somi Andro Takakura. Takakura. Um, and honestly, I have no idea about any of them because I can't remember reading any of them at all. <laughs> This is terrible. <laughs> really gets to the point where I'm like, yes, I've got everything, and I've not read a single thing. So yeah, I can't help you in terms of what they're about, because I haven't read them. 
Um, I haven't read any of her work actually, which is a bit of a shame, but I have the volumes that have been printed and I'm happy about that. So yes, collecting but not actually reading them, and I need to read them. So my TBR is way too long. And right here is just an example that I'm happy to have all of the printed works that she's produced, but I don't actually have um, read at the time or the inclination to have read them all, so unfortunately. Um, I don't know what they're about. So the last title I have in the drawer is an Aja Watanabe title and that is Because I'm a Boy. Um, it is a series of one shots, I read it but I can't really remember what most of them are about other than her designs of characters and I'm not a huge fan of Aja Watanabe's uh, all of her works. This is like one of her, her like early works so yeah. Um, the design of the characters doesn't really suit my taste. It's a little bit too much like Kazuka Minami's in that respect. But yeah, very happy to have it in my collection. As you can see in the photo, uh, there is level C, which is a complete set from volumes 1 through to volume 6. There's also a King's Lesson, another volume of Thunderbolt Boys Excite, this is volume 1. And there's that other uh, Scandalous Serial University, which I'm assuming is just the first one. So yeah, I, this is everything that I think Kitty Media published, other than Incubus Volume 1 and 3. So if they've printed something else and I don't have it, and you have it, and you're like, hey, but she's missing this, please, please, please let me know so that I can get it. Because um, I'd like to have the complete sets of everything that's been published at some point. So I'm on the lookout. So let me know. So this is everything in drawer number 6 for my Behind Closed Drawers BL Collection Tour. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying it. In here was 801, the imprint, a Kodansha comics, some BL, some BL adjacent, and the Kitty Media. That is an almost complete set. Not quite yet, but on the lookout. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've read any of these, or if you um, are a huge fan of any of them. Uh, do you like Black Sun as much as I do? <laughs> How many copies of The Desert Prince have you got? So it turns out I do have four, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, a few um, doubles along the way, so I, I can get rid of quite a few in my collection probably that way. Especially the Eta ones for some reason. But yeah, there's still a few out there that I need to collect. Um, I'm on the lookout for some more of the 801 titles and a couple of those kitty medias. If there are any other Kodansha titles that I should know about, please let me know. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!